Hello everyone, I welcome you all to the third lecture of week 8. In this week, we are studying various advancements in laser based manufacturing processes. In our previous lectures, we have seen how the lasers can be used to assist the material forming. Later, we have seen the laser based microforming, the effect of coatings and the numerical simulation of laser based processes. So, in this week, we will be studying the laser induced plasma assisted ablation. So, this is a very innovative and very interesting application of lasers to produce micro channels, to produce micro features on transparent materials. So, this process is commonly called as LIPA process, that is, laser induced plasma assisted ablation. As the name suggests, we are using plasma which is induced by the laser, which is produced by the laser and by using that plasma, we are generating micro channels or micro features on transparent materials. So, let us see the principle of working of the LIPA, its process parameters and various applications. If we look at the polycarbonates which are widely used in variety of industrial applications and these polycarbonates are basically being used in microelectronic devices. See this polycarbonate or the glass materials are transparent materials and we need these transparent materials for various scientific and industrial applications. So, these applications are basically the microelectronic devices, then are cooling channels that to be developed or cooling systems for the turbine blades, then the microfluidics based drug delivery system. So, the micro channels are having a lot of applications in microelectronic devices, cooling of the turbine blades, microfluidic application and drug delivery devices. Moreover, the micro channels are also having the applications in bio optical sensing devices as well. So, out of these applications, some of the applications are related to the transparent materials such as the micro electronic devices or bio optical sensors and drug delivery systems. However, the turbine blades and other microfluidic devices may not use the transparent materials, they may use any opaque material, it may be a metal or a non-metallic material. So, when we talk about the fabrication of uh, micro channels, so micro channels are fabricated on these materials such as glass, metals and uh, metals we are using stainless steel and polymers is a transparent material. So, various types of polymers being used that is polycarbonate commonly called as PC. Then PDMS, PDMS is polydimethyl siloxane and PMMA material which is also very popularly used in the industry. It is polymethyl methacrylate. So, the polycarbonates having a variety of advantages, good characteristics. The weight of the polycarbonates is low and they do have a very good strength, particularly the impact strength of polycarbonates is very high. The polycarbonates has very good dimensional stability and they are eco-friendly in nature. So, due to all these advantages, the polycarbonates are having wide applications in medical devices, optical instrumentation and sensors. So, these are very critical elements of healthcare as well as the consumer electronics industry. So, when we talk about machining of micro features or micro channels on polycarbonate, there are certain challenges. If we try to see the laser based machining of polycarbonates. The polycarbonate has high transmittance to infrared spectral range. 
and they are having low melting point. Moreover, some of the polycarbonates are having the chemical sensitivity. So, when we try to or when we select a suitable micro machining or micro fabrication technique, we have to take into consideration these three aspects. The first is the transmittivity particularly in infrared spectral range and the low melting point of the polycarbonate. So, we have to choose a particular manufacturing process which should not generate more thermal energy so that the polycarbonate will get uh, melted and it will get parted off and there may be the collapse of the system. Moreover, the polycarbonates are sensitive to certain chemicals and when we use these chemicals for the processing, the features may get damaged, they may get spoiled. So, the sensitivity to chemicals, melting point and the transmittance are to be taken into consideration when we choose the manufacturing process. So, on right side of your screen, you can see a micro channel which is fabricated on a PDMS material. So, this is the PDMS material which is put on the glass substrate and a channel has been fabricated. Well, one more example is there on your screen. So, you just notice this is the concept that we call lab on chip. So, this laboratory on chip, a small polycarbonate chip has been taken and lot of channels are manufactured, fabricated on its surface. So, all these are the channels. These channels are fabricated on its surface. You just notice here. And we are applying the fluid through these channels. There would be mixing channels. So, these are the mixing channels which are getting connected. And when we allow the fluid to flow through these channels, at the junction of the channels, there, there would be the mixing. So, we can design the channels in a such a way that the the appropriate reaction will occur for a suitable time. So, to get the exact chemical reaction done, the time has to be calculated accordingly the channel length can be uh, decided so that the fluid will flow through the channel and it will reach its destination. Then the next fluid will be traveling to that destination by following the another channel. So, the distance traveled by the fluid is dependent upon the, the viscosity of the fluid. So, viscosity of the fluid, the channel uh, smoothness or the roughness of the channel and the length of the channel, all these things are to be considered when we are deciding the fluid mixers. So, these fluid mixers are designed and developed on the chip. Moreover, the flow of the fluid arrangement has to be done. In uh, electrochemical sensors or in electrochemistry, when two different chemicals are mixing when there is a reaction between two different chemicals, some electrical signals are getting generated. So, we have to sense that signal and that signals can be calibrated to some result or some indication. So, these signals are to be catched. So, for that purpose, we need the electronic circuitry as well. So, this particular lab on chip is having arrangement for flow of fluid various channels, their designs, their connections, the electronic circuitry, the fluid deposition mechanism and all these are to be developed on a single uh, chip only of meso size. The size of the chip is in centimeters. Now, when we talk about such a small or a micro channels, what the process would be useful for us? So, of course, there are mechanical based processes such as mechanical micro machining, but in mechanical micro machining, the design and development of the contact tool of micro size, say 50 microns or 100 microns of the contact tool, it itself is a very difficult task. So, to manufacture the edges on the micro milling tool, it is very difficult time consuming and the tools are fragile. So, during the operation, the tools are getting broken down, we have to replace them and the operation is very costly. 
when we are talking about the chemical based processes the if the polycarbonate material is uh, sensitive to that particular chemical then the channels may get spoiled and we may have some sort of residue of that particular chemical on the channel. So, when we are using such devices for the biomedical applications that residue chemicals may affect the accuracy of the results being computed by that particular uh, lab on chip device or the micro uh, microfluidic based biosensor. So, here in this case the thermal based processes would be a very good idea or it is a very good uh, option to design and fabricate the micro channels and lasers are finding its uh, wide application for such purpose. As we have seen that the lasers are having the capability to get focused on a very small area and the monochromaticity, the coherence, these are all the characteristics which are helping to concentrate of the laser beam energy at a very small spot. So, that spot can be utilized to ablate the material, to remove the material and by using this removal process, we can manufacture the micro channels. So, the same concept is being utilized in a laser based micro channeling, but here the problem is the transmittance. So, the some of the materials such as the polycarbonate or glass, they are having high transmittivity. So, how the lasers can be utilized to process these materials? So, to tackle this problem, there is innovation has been done that is a laser induced plasma assisted ablation. So, all the lasers when they are getting impinged on uh, or when they are getting applied on the substrate material, the heat energy which is getting generated at the laser material interaction that is creating some sort of plasma in the air, some sort of ionization of the air molecules and that plasma is a state of high temperature and high pressure and that plasma can be utilized to carry out some application. So, can we use that particular plasma to manufacture the micro channels? Now, let us see how this laser induced plasma can be utilized to manufacture the micro channels. So, before that let us have a quick review of variety of the micro channel manufacturing techniques. So, the micro channel fabrication techniques are there in front of you. The first technique is micro wire molding. So, here we are using a micro sized wire and by using this micro sized wire we are developing a mold and by using that mold we are manufacturing the variety of uh, micro channels. But here the problem of micro molding is that we can just manufacture the linear features, straight features, linear channels only. Moreover, when we are developing the micro molding application, there is a need to have high volume of material and there is a wastage of the high volume of material. We, are, we may require to have only a 200 micrometer of the micro channel width or around 100 micrometer of the depth, but for that purpose we may need to invest the material in terms of a few cubic centimeters. Moreover, there is an overflow of degassed polymer from the mold. So, there is a chances of having the overflow and due to that there may be chances of having poor quality of micro channels. The second one is the lithography based process and here we are using lot of chemicals and these chemicals may be sensitive to the polycarbonate materials and in many of the cases that substrate is getting absorbed the development solution only. So, this development so solution is the chemical solution and when substrate is absorbing this chemical solution and this chemical solution will change the material properties, will change the surface properties of that channel which we are not uh, envisaged, which we are not desiring during this operation. The third is imprinting operation. So, the imprinting is having the disadvantage of slow mass transport and there is a permanent entrapment of the material into the metal blocks. In imprinting process, we are developing the metal blocks and by using these metal blocks, we are generating the micro channels. But there is a chances of having the permanent 
entrapment of the material in that metal blocks and when there is a entrapment of the basic the substrate material we may not have the sufficient material for generation of the micro channels. So, these are some of the uh, processes and these processes are having some limitation. So, to overcome this limitation as I mentioned previously the lasers are quite useful and these lasers are in general being used for the micro machining application. So, as I mentioned previously laser can be used to manufacture the micro channels. However, it is essential to set the process parameters appropriately. So, what are the process parameters to be taken into consideration? So, these are wavelength, laser power and pulse duration. However, the laser based micro machining is having certain challenges as well and these challenges are enumerated here. So, for micro machining using lasers, the laser must be highly absorbed by the material. So, this is the fundamental thing, the laser must get absorbed by the material and that is the problem with the transparent material such as the polycarbonate or glass. Most micro channels demand the use of transparent materials. So, most of the cases as we have seen that it is required to have the transparent materials. Now, our challenge is to process these transparent materials to manufacture the micro channels by using lasers. High transparency of the transparent material does not allow the laser energy to be absorbed. Hence, it is difficult to machine transparent material by lasers. So, for this purpose we are using the laser induced plasma assisted ablation and it is very useful for transparent materials and this transparent material processing would be done at longer pulses with longer wavelength lasers. So, it is very essential to note here longer pulses we can go for the India laser with 1 micron or even the CO2 laser and longer wavelengths as well. So, in both these cases such as the India laser or CO2 lasers, we can easily process the transparent materials and the cost of these laser machines is not that high. It would be economical to employ these uh, longer pulse uh, lasers or longer wavelength lasers and we can easily manufacture at affordable price the micro channels. The typical arrangement of the LIPAA that is a laser induced plasma assisted ablation is there on your screen. So, we are taking the NDR laser here, it is a solid state laser, there is a power supply, the power supply is for the CNC controller as well. The CNC controller is controlling the movement of the table. On the table we are having the target material. So, here we are using a target material and over this target material we are putting the transparent material. So, it is to be noted over here we got a target material and over the target material there is transparent material. Then the typical laser conveyance system is there. So, here we are having the beam bender then the arrangement of expander and collimator and there is a focusing lens which is used to focus the laser beam energy on the target material. Now, let us see what is happening when the laser is being applied over the target material. So, laser is applied over the target material. Now, when the laser is applied over the target material, it is transmitting through the transparent material or the dielectric medium. So, here this is the transparent material and through which the laser is getting just transmitted and it is getting focused on the metal target. So, laser is focused over here on the metal target. The metal target is opaque. So, certainly there would be absorption the energy will get absorbed. Then there is an excitation of free electrons on the metal surface. So, when 
the energy is get absorbed there is a excitation of free electrons here and as there is excitation of free electrons there would be heating of the surface. So, when heat energy or the thermal energy is getting generated, so there is the conduction will occur, so the energy will get conducted, there would be some melting and vaporization. Along with this conduction, melting and vaporization of the metal target, there is a formation of plasma in the air, in the surrounding medium. So, here we are getting a plasma formation. So, there is ionization of the surrounding air due to the high heat which is getting generated and this plasma is nothing but a high pressure, high temperature zone and this high temperature zone which is getting generated that is melting the transparent material. So, we are generating the heat which is part of the plasma and that plasma heat will be used to ablate the transparent material. So, we are getting the feature on the upside down surface or the reverse surface of the transparent material. We do not get the feature over here, we are getting the feature on its rear surface. So, when we put the material or when we want to develop the features, we have to take this point into consideration that the transparent material or the transparent substrate has to be put in ups and down direction. Now, when there is a plasma formation, so certainly there would be phase transformation on the transparent medium and as we move the target material along with the transparent material in a specified direction, we can generate variety of features. So, this is the principle of working of the laser induced plasma assisted ablation. Now, let us see the experimental setup or the physical setup of this particular process that is a LIPA. So, on your screen you can see a India glazer machine and here the wavelength you can notice is 1 micron, the longer wavelength. This machine is providing us a pulse repetition rate of up to 1500 hertz and the width is the pulse width, the laser pulse width is from 0.5 to 20 millisecond. So, this is a millisecond laser, the pulse duration is also quite high, it is longer pulse duration and we can have a laser spot diameter up to 100 micron, it is a lower value, the lowest value is 100 micron. So, this particular laser you can see in the inset that this is a laser head. and the laser head is having the nozzle and we have taken the metal target over here and over the metal target the transparent material has just kept. So, either you can have the deliberate gap between the metal target or the transparent material or you can simply put the transparent material on the metal target. The natural gap due to the asperities would be sufficient to generate the plasma. Of course, the plasma will be generated for a very small uh, height, it is in microns only. Now, based on this LIPA process, let us have a case study. So, that the schematic of that particular case study is there in front of you. So, here we will try to do the experiments for fabrication of micro channels using LIPA. So, to carry out the experiments, we have to vary certain laser parameters and these laser parameters we have taken power, pulse, repetition rate and the width. Now, we will decide the number of levels of the pulse power, pulse repetition rate and the pulse width. However, to decide the levels of these parameters, it is highly essential to carry out the preliminary studies or the feasibility studies. And based upon these preliminary studies and feasibility studies, we are deciding the ranges of the parameters. After that, the parametric analysis would be carried out and this parametric analysis would be based upon 
the collection of the results or the record of the results. Then this parametric analysis would also help us to find out the optimal levels of process parameters. After finding out the optimal levels of process parameters, the micro channel will be developed for the optimal levels of process parameters. So, this is giving us the optimal levels of process parameters. And for these optimal levels of process parameters, we have to generate the micro channel. And that micro channel will be further closed by using thermal bonding technique. We will be seeing the thermal bonding technique. And after development of a closed micro channel, then we can go for its actual application. It may be any application, say in a electronic devices, biomedical applications, or microfluidic applications. So, output parameters which we will be studying are channel width, channel depth, and the roughness. So, these are three important characteristics to be taken into consideration when we analyze the micro machining operations. Fine. So, based upon the preliminary studies or the initial experiments, the levels are finalized now. So, here you just notice the pulse power density is computed and it has taken into three levels which are there in front of you. We have taken the repetition rate in hertz that is a 40, 60 and 80 and the pulse duration is 2, 4 and 6. Scan speed also has been varied and that is 4 mm per second, 7 mm per second and 10 mm per second. So, here a full factorial design of experiments is carried out. Full factorial design of experiment means we are getting all the combinations by varying these four parameters in three levels. So, all experiments would be carried out in a full factorial way. The detailed micro morphology study of these micro channels is to be carried out and then even we are trying to find out the elemental compositions of these micro channels. So, after manufacturing, after ablation of the channels, what is the composition? What are the elements which are present in the micro channel? So, that is also an important thing when we talk about the use of micro channels for biomedical applications. So, there should not be any foreign components uh, there should not be any foreign elements present over the micro channel or there should not be any unusual combination of the elements which may harm or which may give wrong signals, wrong results during the lab on chip experiments. Fine, now on your screen you can see the photographs of the actual micro machining during this LIPA process. So, here the laser head that you can notice very well and we are having the aluminum substrate. So, in this case we have taken the metal substrate as aluminum, then the polycarbonate is play, placed over the aluminum substrate and during this operation you just notice that plasma has been generated and we are interested in this plasma and by using this plasma only we are generating the micro channels. So, two more photographs of the plasma can be seen on your screen. So, this is the plasma and here also we have, we are noticing the plasma. So, image A is the plasma which is generated near irradiated zone of the aluminum sheet. So, near the aluminum sheet what is the plasma generated. So, when we keep the polycarbonate above the aluminum, so we get this type of plasma. And when there is no polycarbonate above the aluminum, we are getting a very small plasma that you can see. Due to the placement of the polycarbonate material over the aluminum plate, so there is a generation of more plasma due to entrapment of the medium between the two plates or the two sheets. 
After generation of the micro channels, we examined and here you notice the ablation which is there on the aluminum sheet. So, this portion got ablated during the application of laser beam energy and we are also getting the ablation on the polycarbonate due to the plasma. So, this is due to the laser heating and this ablation on the polycarbonate it is due to the plasma, plasma ablation. Now, as I mentioned, we will see the composition of these materials. So, what exactly the, the nature of elements that we do have? So, we have taken the samples at three different location. So, this is the base polycarbonate, its chemical composition, then the channel edge. So, at the edge of the channel, what exactly the elements are present? and inside the channel bed. So, if you notice the base polycarbonate is having the carbon percentage about 81.3 and there are other elements such as oxygen and the aluminum. So, aluminum substrate also has been noticed on the polycarbonate because it is a deposition of the aluminum over the transparent material. At the edge, we notice that the carbon percentage is more or less same that is 82.1 percentage and there is residue of aluminum as well. But when we go inside the channel bed, so we notice that the carbon percentage has increased, the oxygen percentage has reduced and aluminum is still there. However, the percentage of aluminum is less. So, the more aluminum has been noticed at the edges. So, we got the basic composition that carbon is present over here, but the aluminum substrate is also present. So, we have to choose the substrate material in such a way that it should be inactive, it should not be reactive to the actual chemical reaction which will be carried out by using that micro channel. Well, let us uh, study the effect of the laser parameters on the width that is the channel width. So, channel width is crucial as far as the micro fluidics application is concerned. So, on your screen there are variety of graphs are there. So, let us try to understand the meaning and the indication of uh, these results. So, in the first set of graphs we have taken the power density, so pulse power density on x axis we have tried to analyze the effect of pulse power density on channel width and it is for variety of pulse duration that is 2 milliseconds, 4 milliseconds and 6 milliseconds. So, if you just see the trend here, as we increase the pulse power density, the channel width is increasing 4 millisecond and the 2 millisecond as well it is almost a linear enhancement or increase. For 6 millisecond, there is not much increase in the width from so 3 megawatt per centimeter square density to 4.5 megawatt per centimeter square density. However, if we increase the power density further, it is reaching or it is achieving its highest point. Then for the next set also, you can see that we have taken pulse duration on x axis and we will try to see the effect of pulse duration along with variation in the frequency. So, frequency here is a 40 hertz, 60 hertz and 80 hertz. So, we have seen that as the pulse duration is increasing, there is increase in the pulse width as well. Moreover, we have taken the pulse repetition rate on x axis and we tried to vary the power density and we analyzed the channel width accordingly. So, here you can just notice for lower power density, there is not much difference in the channel width for 
enhancement in the repetition rate. However, sudden burning was noticed when we are working at a high repetition rate and the higher power density that is 6.112 megawatt per centimeter square. So, overall the results are summarized here low pulse duration of 2 millisecond along with either pulse laser power density of 3 or pulse repetition rate of 40 hertz is resulting in formation of no channels. So, when we look at the data, so it is very clear cut here that low pulse power density and low pulse repetition rate is having no effect, there is no ablation is being occurred. Whereas, the combination of high pulse power density, high pulse repetition rate is detrimental, it is creating some problem, it is burning out the polycarbonate material, it is spoiling the specimen to the output responses such as channel width and channel depth as well and it is causing the burning of the PC sheet. So, here you can see, so this is the burning of PC sheet and certainly it is not expected, it is not desired. So, the increase in pulse power density, pulse duration and repetition rate results in the increase in the responses such as channel width, channel depth and the roughness. So, higher level of process parameters are increasing the responses levels as well. However, a decrease in responses was observed with increase in scan speed. So, if we are increasing the scan speed, certainly there is a decrease in the responses values as well. Now, let us see the impact of scan speed on the channel formation. So, how this scan speed is affecting the channel formation. So, on your screen you can see the images, the optical images of the micro channels which are generated. So, here you can see the scan speed is not only affecting the channel geometry, but also plays an important role in the formation of the channel. The quality of the channel is also very much dependent upon the scan speed. A channel is formed when the pulse overlap is greater than 0, certainly. So, there has to be a overlap of the pulses to achieve a continuous channel to be formed. And the discrete craters will be generated when the pulse overlap is less than 0. You have to choose the frequency of application of lasers or the scan speed in such a way that there has to be a sufficient overlap between the pulses. To achieve a positive overlap, let us consider a beam diameter of around 200 micron that we do have and we have taken 4 mm per second as the scan speed and we have also taken 7 mm per second as the scan speed as well. For both these cases, it has been noticed that the overlap is around 100 micron for 4 mm per second scan speed and 175 micron for 7 mm per second of the scan speed. And this overlap percentage is about 50 percentage and 12.5 percentage. Now, when we are trying to fo form the channels, the maximum scan speed of 4 mm per second is recommended, it is preferred which is giving us about 50 percentage of the overlap value. So, with this the optimal levels of process parameters, now we have to develop the micro channel which can further be utilized for the intended purpose. So, to develop that micro channel, the closed micro channel, so we have taken the polycarbonate sheet which is processed by using the LIPA and we used another polycarbonate sheet which is the plane and we kept that plane polycarbonate sheet on the processed polycarbonate sheet in this manner. Now, these two plates are to be bonded together. 
So, to bond them together, we have used a conventional hot press. So, we have to increase their temperature in a controlled manner and then there would be bonding at the interface. So, this is the interface of both the plates and there has to be bonding between these two plates so that the fluid which is flowing through the channel will not get spillover. So, this particular arrangement can be seen on your screen. So, it is having a lower die, there is a upper die and in between the lower die and upper die we are keeping the channel specimen. We have to set the pressure, this is the pressure gauge and we have to even set the temperature as well. According to the temperature value, the heating would be carried out and the pressure would be applied and then certainly we will have the bonded channels for our application. So, by using the optimum process parameters, open channels were fabricated which were then closed by using thermal bonding technique. Now, let us see whether this closed channel is working properly or not. So, for that purpose we are using a microfluidic arrangement. So, this arrangement is there in front of you. So, we are having a syringe here, this is a syringe clamp and through this syringe we are applying the fluid inside the micro channel. And when the fluid is moving through the channel, we have to record its movement, we have to record its flow. So, that can be seen over here when the fluid is flowing through the micro channel. So, this is particular the micro channel that you can see and this is the micro channel and this is the fluid which is moving through it. So, this fluid is pushed or it is applied by using the dispovan syringe and here you can notice this particular arrangement is the bonded polycarbonate sheets. So, the test was carried out and it was noticed that the fluid is fluently flowing through the channel and there is no slip over, there is no leakage of the fluid from the bonded channel. So, this certainly gives the indication of the success that LIPA can be utilized to manufacture the micro channels on the transparent material in particular, we can close it and we can utilize it for our microfluidic devices applications. So, in summary, I can say we have seen the laser induced plasma assisted ablation, its principle of working We have also seen the arrangement arrangement using uh, NDA laser. So, we have seen various uh, process parameters, various process parameters involved. and then a brief parametric study as well on channel width. So, channel width that we have seen. The elemental composition of the developed channel, then the bonding of PC to close the channels. So, we got the closed channels and then we verified the performance as well, verified the performance of micro channel.
So fine, so with this uh, we can say that lasers are quite useful, important in micro machining as well. So with this I would like to stop for today's class. Thank you for watching this video. Goodbye.